Hello! My name is Lorenzo Ciccione, and I'm a PhD candidate in Cognitive Neuroscience. I don't know your job, but I'm sure you deal with the topic of my research on a daily basis. Maybe you are a scientist, looking at the results from your last experiment, hoping to find a significant difference between these two conditions. Or you are a medical doctor, looking at your patient's heartbeat to see if it's going too fast or too slow. Or you are an investor and you spend the day looking at the increase in stock prices but you still cannot decide if it's better to sell everything now or to wait just a little bit more because that small increase looks pretty promising. Or you do another job but you are a parent and you've been asking yourself if it's safe enough to send your children to school, especially given the number of coronavirus cases in your country or your specific town. In all of these situations, you've been taking quite complex decisions based on a simple tool. A graph, or call it a chart, a plot. In other words, a visual representation of the relationship existing between two variables, usually expressed through axes. But what makes a graph so special? Well, it conveys complex information about a lot of data, such as in the examples I've given you before, in a very simple and fast way. Just imagine, for example, being a medical doctor, calculating each numerical value by hand to get your patient's heartbeat. That's too slow and not practical at all. Instead, by directly looking at this plot, you get the same information in a much easier way and you can react much faster. But we do not need to be medical doctors to see how common and useful graphs are. According to the University of San Diego, we receive a total amount of 34 gigabytes of information per person per day. That's huge. And most of this information comes to us through graphs, plots, charts, and other kinds of visual representations. However, be ready for some bad news. One third of the general population do not understand the meaning of a simple graph. As simple as this pie chart over here. They don't get it. They cannot understand it. In other words, they don't have graphicacy skills. Graphicacy is the ability to read and understand a graph. And most scientists and teachers consider graphicacy now as important as literacy, the ability to read, and numeracy, the ability to count. And graphicacy is especially important nowadays where we have to navigate in between all these pieces of information and fake news as well. We all sadly remember these plots from the beginning of the pandemics. And most of us struggle understanding the number of coronavirus cases. We thought that their increase was linear, but it was not. It was an exponential increase. According to several studies, this small misunderstanding on a simple plot actually contributed to the late responses of most countries against the virus. And we all know how it ended. This example clearly shows how crucial graphs might be for the understanding of the outside world. However, if we look at school curricula, we don't find much. Usually graphs are not taught at school as part of a formal training and they are often seen as just a complementary tool for science, history, geography or other subjects. So, given all that, what can I, a neuroscientist, do to improve the way people learn, read and understand a graph? Together with my supervisor, we want to propose a cognitive neuroscience approach to education. In other words, we want to gather as much information as we can on the cognitive and neural basis of graph understanding. So, how we read the graph and what happens in the brain when we do so. And then, translate this knowledge into an educational program that will specifically try to improve the way we read and understand the graph. Concretely, what are we doing? We're running a series of behavioral experiments where we show to subjects scatter plots such as this one, and we ask them some questions about it. Is it tendency increasing? Is it decreasing? 
how confident are you in this judgment, and so on. And we look at subjects' mistakes when they perform such a task, and the reaction times, and the elements of the graphs that they mostly struggle with. Also, we plan to put people in fMRI scans to see where in the brain a bunch of points suddenly becomes a meaningful plot. Which cognitive areas are involved when we read a graph? Because vision is surely important, but language, mathematical reasoning, decision-making areas are very likely to be involved as well. We also want to look at the graph experts among you. Doctors, statisticians, researchers, managers. You guys, according to several studies, are even better than machines when it comes to understand complex graphs. How can you do so? What does it take to become a graph expert? With the help of the Mind Science Foundation, we'll be able to fill the gap between all these discoveries that we can make in our lab and the needs of the general population. We will implement an educational program that will be specifically trying to tackle all the mistakes that people make when they read the graph. This program, and possibly a digital app based on it, will also try to train all those cognitive functions that are involved in graph understanding. As I said at the beginning, we live in a very complex world and we are facing very complex decisions. Whether you are a doctor taking care of your patient or an investor deciding if it's okay to sell now or wait a little bit more or a parent reading newspapers and watching TV news, in all these situations, graphs are a very great companion and they help you to make better decisions. Our ultimate goal is to make graphs accessible and understandable by everyone. Because a simple plot cannot solve our problems. But at least it can help us to better understand them. I'm really thankful for your attention and I hope to see you soon.